Hello! Good day! Welcome to GED 151 Purposive Communication, Modules 4 and 5. This is Module 4. Our first topic is Types of Media. In Types of Media, we have People Media, Text Media, Visual Media, Motion Media, Audio Media, Manipulatives, and Multimedia. In people media, we have resource speakers who are knowledgeable or experts in the field. For text media, these are the books, newspapers, letters. While visual media contain icons, logos, charts, and slides in science experiments. Motion media are videos and movies. Audio media are audiobooks, podcasts, cassette tapes, CDs, iTunes, and Spotify. Manipulatives are diorama, microscope, and clay or paper models. And finally, multimedia is the combination of the types of media mentioned here. The second topic in Module 4 is steps in making effective multimedia presentations. First, know the purpose. Why are you doing this? Second, know the audience. Who is it intended for? Third, gather information, which are verifiable and credible sources. Fourth, Use a variety of resources. Which type of media is appropriate? Fifth, do not forget the sources. Cite, it is important. Give credit where it is due. Finally, sixth, organize the information. Be creative and sensitive to the needs of the intended audience. The next topic in Module 4 is planning and delivering the presentation. In planning, you have to know your purpose, analyze your audience, make sense of your context. In delivering the presentation, whatever your role is, you need to remember that you have to own the stage once you are up there. The rules of thumb are guidelines. There are things that you need to do which makes your presentation usually better, and there are things that you do not need to do because it will make your presentation usually worse. Let's start with the things you need to do to make your presentation usually better. You talk, you stand, you move, you vary the pitch of your voice, you speak loudly facing the audience, you make eye contact, and you focus on main points. While you need to avoid the following things because they make your presentation usually worse. You read your presentation, you sit while doing the presentation, you stand still, you speak in a monotone, you mumble facing downward, you stare at your laptop and get lost in details. This is the next set of guidelines or rules of thumb that you need to be aware about in delivering your presentation. To make your presentation usually better, you need to use outlines, images, and charts. Finish within your time limit. Summarize your main points. Notice your audience and respond to its needs. And finally, you have to emulate excellent speakers. Here are the things you need to avoid because it will make your presentation usually worse. You do not have visual aids. You run over time. You do the presentation without overview or conclusion. You ignore audience behavior. And lastly, Never ever emulate lousy speakers. Evaluating and reflecting on the presentation. If you are the speaker, 
Here are the questions you ask yourself after the presentation. How did I perform as a speaker? Did I fulfill my role effectively? Next, how did I communicate my message to my audience? Did my presentation make any visible impact on them? Usually, in trainings set up by DepEd, after every training session, there is katame or quality assurance, technical assistance, monitoring, and evaluation. The results of katame will help the speakers and the project management team to improve the presentation. So in webinars that you attend online, if there are speaker evaluations, you have to fill out and accomplish that because it will help the speaker the next time the speaker is invited to present his expertise. We now have module five. We start with the definition of a report. A report is a comprehensive document that covers all aspects of the subject matter. After the definition, we have the types of report. A report can be categorized into an informal report or a formal report. An informal report aims to inform, analyze, and recommend while a formal report is a detailed information containing research and data necessary for decision making. The types of informal report are 1. Progress report 2. Sales activity report 3. Personal evaluation 4. Financial report 5. Feasibility Report 6. Literature Review 7. Credit Report The types of formal report are Informational Report Analytical Report Recommendation Report Research Report and Case Study Analysis Report Now, we have the parts of a report, which are title page, table of contents, executive summary, introduction, methods, findings, conclusion, recommendation, and bibliography. The characteristics of a formal report are it is an official report. It contains detailed information. A formal report is formal complex, and used at an official level, like decision-making. A formal report is a written account of a major project. A formal report is about launching a new technology or project line or results of study. Finally, a formal report is a review of developments in the field. The characteristics of an informal report are its aim is to inform, analyze, and recommend. An informal report may be a memo, financial report, monthly activities report, development report, or research. An informal report is written according to an institution's style and rules. An informal report has parts that are not required in an informal report. And an informal report conveys routine messages. A resume and cover letter. A resume is a persuasive summary of your qualifications for employment. Together with this is an application letter or a cover letter that introduces you to the employer. Writing resume and cover letter requires a level of care. Application letter. Your application letter is generally the first thing your prospective employers will see, and it should motivate them to read your resume. It provides a positive impression and formal introduction of yourself. Usually, 
the resume and cover letter will make the employer search for you online and check whether the information you put in there are relevant and realistic. The next topic in Module 5 is Memorandum or Memo. It comes from the Latin word Memorare, which means to tell or state. There are reasons or situations you need to use memo. A few of these reasons are announcement for diverse occasions and changes such as policies, procedures, or processes. Here are a few other reasons when to use memo from Low Cicero 2007. Confirmations of discussions, decisions, and meetings. Documents for submission, such as reports, data, research, and results of surveys. And recommendations. Finally, we also use memo for these reasons. Requests for further information and solicitations for opinions. Memorandum is less formal than business letters. Parts of a minute, according to Robert's Rule of Order 2005. Committee or organizational name, kind of meeting, date, location, and time, names of the chair and secretary, names of all present members, names of guests and roles, reference to approval of last meeting's minutes, motions raised and member who raised it, reports and member who presented it, other special concerns, signature of secretary upon approval. Here is what you have to answer for Discussion Forum 4. Indeed, soft skills or interpersonal skills are important in the success of any organization. Employers look at attitude and communication skills as significant attributes when they evaluate applicants. Bloomer 2001 They do not look only for skilled graduates. Surveys have shown that they prefer applicants who have high communication and interpersonal skills. C. White, 2013. What do you think is your best soft skill? Cite an instance you were able to use this soft skill. Answer in two to three sentences only. For Discussion Forum 5, the workplace consists of diverse individuals. Hence, using politically correct terms to avoid offending people belonging to a specific race, religion, gender, age range, class, and group is important. Political correctness in language means using words that have positive suggestions or connotations to avoid discrimination. Relate cultural sensitivity and political correctness to each other and share one personal experience about it. Please answer in two to three sentences only. Finally, for Discussion Forum 6, based on personal experience from the lessons or topics we have discussed during midterm in purposive communication, what is the most important topic for you? Please answer in two to three sentences only. Thank you for watching and I hope you learned something today.